So, anything else? I'm going to move to Odeo. Odeo helps you create podcasts. Does everyone know what a podcast? Yeah. Okay. Internet radio show, essentially. I got hooked into Odeo initially because you could do the podcast by phone, which I thought was, again, not a gadget girl. I'm like, phone? I use the phone. That would be great. So when I initially used it, I would call up a phone number, type in my code, and then do my podcast. It was very, very simple to do. In fact, um, it, the, and I did, po did podcast for the Blandin Foundation. It was one way that we promoted a conference that they had coming up, and they just said that would be great if we could get the, um, the director to do a podcast, and we were able to do that. It was great for several reasons. Uh, one, the conference was on broadband technology. So if you can get the director to actually do that, that was, he felt like he was really an active participant. Um, then when his 17-year-old at dinner said that you don't know what a podcast is, he said that you don't know that I just did one. <laughs> yeah, so they, it, start, it starts to get people getting used to, getting, getting used to using it. And then we could send out a note saying, hey, listen to the podcast. It was a little bit more active for people to do it that way. The podcast that I most maintain um, uh, would be my kids. They do a little pod. So it's so easy. A kid can do it. You know, and we just did one yesterday that that doesn't use their phone service because they don't allow they don't have the phone free phone service anymore. Something I'm going to say about it is uh, Flickr free, although you can buy enhancements. Audio free, although you can buy enhancements, and I think that's true with pretty much everything yeah. that we're going to show today. Yeah. So I did um, one of the new audio podcasts yesterday. Bought a little microphone. Major purchase for me, nine ninety nine. It was a tough one. <laughs> Um, plugged it into my laptop. They've got the software that you can use on their website. And I said the software is very easy to use. And I'll be frank and I'll say the Odeo website, not as easy to use. It's, it's they, they need a librarian to organize their website. I'll tell you that much right now. But if you ever plan to use it, knowing that there's Odeo, www.odeo.com and studio.odeo.com, that is an important thing. The audio will store your podcast. The studio, uh, I'm sorry, the web will, will store it. The studio will help you create it. So the software is all there. You don't need to download anything. You push, you know, mouse record, say what you want to say, mouse stop, hit play, and, I'll, and it's all pretty much set up. Then you hit, that's it, final version. They do their magic presto, and it, it's turned into a podcast. All you need to do then is grab the code and put it on your website. You can do a couple things with it. You can either put it on your website. Um, maybe if we go to the next screen, I think I have, I think I have a sample. Mm. You can either put it, uh, and it will look, I, I know it's a bad picture, but it'll look something like this where people can click play, and then they can hear the podcast. Um, or you can click a link and it can click back to your audio page and then they can see all of your, um, it's kind of like a blog. You can either point to one podcast or point to your podcast page. Um, and once you have that code, you can put it on your page um, and, and people can listen to it there or click for further information. And it's got RSS feeds so people can subscribe directly to them and just get your podcast whenever yep. you po post them. Yep, yep. So that's, um, here are some of the companies that were using NPR. Um, no, I can't time. Current's I can't read this. Got, uh, got a podcast. Yep. Oh. The, I was just I was just listening. I was doing something really boring yesterday, so I was listening to a bunch of podcasts on um, search engine optimization. So that if, do you mind scrolling? Sorry, I got to move on. Just yell at me. Um, just keep, here were some of the the examples, some of the ideas that you could do with this. You could pos podcast portions of your newsletter. I mean, I think you had if you had a, a case study or something you were featuring somebody on in your newsletter, I think if you were doing a podcast, that could be a much more effective way to reach people. Um, I come from, I used to work in the service learning industry. Um, I worked for service learning for a number of years. I was the librarian for the National Clearinghouse, uh, Service Learning Clearinghouse. And one of the things that they were very big with was intergenerational projects. Now, to me, I think that if you could get uh, kids to podcast with their grandmas, you know, and kind of get the stories that way. That would be a fantastic way to archive that kind of information. Um, you can do the same kind of tagging that we were talking about before with some of this. 
providing training or instruction. And you take a look at some of the podcast topics, and I, you know, I love them. They're from the ridiculous to the sublime. Wine. A lot of wine classes by podcast. Who knew? Language classes. Language Italian. classes. Language classes make sense to me. Wine. I want to be... You know, <laughs> I was delighted when I delighted when I found the language classes, and I tried them out. I just can't do this. It's, it's still hard. Isn't it? <laughs> it's still hard. But I think it's a fantastic way. Obviously, you can generally you can listen to them online, or you can download them to your iPod and listen to them whenever you can. Um, give your constituents a voice, and I think that's a little bit like the intergenerational project. But if you I mean, you, you can literally record them and give them a voice on your website, give you a voice someplace, and let people speak for themselves. I mean, I think that that's important. Uh, record conferences. Um, where, I was just someplace where they were doing that, and they were, well, that was one of the options that we're gonna do for this Freeman Forum conference tomorrow. Food versus fuel, if you have an interest in the topic, freemanforum.org, it will be podcasted, and we will have it available on the web, which is particularly great because it's sold out. It is absolutely sold out. So it's a way to convey that information. And I'm a big fan of uh, just-in-time learning. Not everybody can take off on a Tuesday to go to an all-day conference. But if you're really interested in the topic, you can listen to it later. Um, I think it's great um, to show your personality or expertise. If you, you, know, if you want to become an expert. I had a friend who taught a class on if you want to become an expert. She was a librarian. And I think one of the ways that you... Uh, can become an expert is by having these podcasts. You become recognized as an expert. Similar to if you have. I also, I work with a number of people who um, they want to have a blog. They they like the idea of a blog. They, they you know they want to get out there. They want to get their personality out there, but they don't enjoy writing. And very often, if you don't enjoy writing, you you're probably not that good at it. I mean, I, I mean, I think sometimes sometimes those go hand in hand, not necessarily. But a lot of those people are kind of jumping over the idea of having a newsletter or having a blog or having some other way to contact their um, constituents on a regular basis, and they're going to do the podcast. Yeah, and a podcast is a lot easier to consume than reading. Um, I love podcasts because I can drive and listen to them and get my what I would have to read otherwise done without without having to read it. Um, also, we should note that the audio is a search engine for, for podcasts, too. So once you create your podcast, you can post it to there mm -hmm. and, uh, and get traffic from that. Um, the other thing I'd note is uh, while most people listen to podcasts on their on web pages or on their computers rather than on their uh, iPods, it's amazing to me how many people fail to realize you know, how the, the information is going to be consumed. Uh, I listen to Webmaster Radio dot FM or something <laughs> like that, and it's you know the technology stuff I have to listen to, and their podcasts, and these guys have these radio introductions that are telling you just how great they are, and they have this music, and it's piercing, and it's you know the the vol for the intro, the volume level is that much higher than the actual program, and I start it, and I have to take my ears and my things up because it's breaking my eardrum. So think about the, the uh, <laughs> when you do it, think about the medium too. Well, and I'll say, my, we got, my, got my dad an iPod for his birthday two years ago. It's now my iPod. Uh, but he's, you can have it, but at some point you have to give it to me with all of the NPR shows that I miss. And, you know, he's, six, he's early 60s. He's not a super old guy, but he's retired. And he, like, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. And I think more and more people are realizing, I know you can do that. You, you can get that information to me in that format. So it's, it's the, reader, the readership, the audience, the target market is, is growing wider and wider. I think you're, oh, I know what. Oh, oh okay, I had one other genius thing. To, oh, guided tours versus iPod. I love this idea. The green tours, um, green tours are, uh, they promote sustainable tourism up in rural Minnesota. I do a lot of work in rural Minnesota. And one of the things that they, I actually said, you should do this, and they did. They have guided tours by, by the iPod. So while you're driving down Route 66, you put in the iPod, and they'll tell you. And they, they have maps as well, and they used to just have an annotated map. The podcast has been very popular. Last time I checked, the Minneapolis Institute of Art didn't have any uh, tours but they should have a video tour of whatever, you know, show they've got in there. So you could just walk through it with your iPod, iPod. on and get, you know, yep. some commentary of the... Uh... I just added this because, I, as I said, the reason that I started with, with audio is because it was available for free by phone. The replacement is Gcast. 
I think it's a great way to just test it out. I, you know, I have only gone so far with it, so I'm not going to say anymore. But I think doing a podcast by phone, yeah. Then you don't have to spend a big ten bucks at Target like I did for the microphone. But it's very, it's very easy. They really just kind of walk you through. Any questions about audio? Because I think I'm. Yeah. Just a question about podcasts. I mean, where else do you find them? iTunes. Okay. The iTunes that comes with the iPod. Where Where do you find podcasts? Where do you find podcasts? Yep. Well, audio is one, and that's it's a pretty big one to find podcasts. Um, I think if you you know, Podcast Alley is one. Yeah. Just search for podcasts yeah. on Google. Yeah, and look at, yeah, and, and once you're kind of aware that they're there, and once you have an interest in them, a lot of a lot of your web, favorite websites will have them. They're, the local <laughs> the problem is it's and cracking. Then, it's cra- what is the local? And then podcast.com, I think. Is, is there a channel? Or I heard about a local channel that has podcasts on the TV. The local. Oh, what's MN channel? Stories? Oh, Minnesota yeah. Channel. That's that's a yeah. TPT does that. Okay. Yep, and they've got they've got video podcasts there. And Mary LaHammer has one for at the Capitol segment. Yeah. 